Hello, hello, how's my mic levels? All right, we're looking good. How's it going, everyone? My name is Andrew. This is Solid Rocket Future, covering the most exciting parts of human spaceflight and rocketry. Uh, today, we're in our brand new studio here down uh, near Starbase, Texas. Um, we don't really have much uh, going on yet as far as setting the studio up, but uh, we're here, we're live. I'm happy to finally be down here, and um, we'll see how the actual stream goes and how the, uh, the internet uh, quality is, but I think there's a couple adjustments I still have to make. But I think we hopefully will be good enough for today. So uh, if you have any comments about, you know, how the stream is looking, how it's sounding and uh, how, uh, you know, if it's dropping out or anything, yeah, let me know. But, uh, you know, I think we're going to be in pretty good shape here. So today's a really exciting today, uh, day where we're waiting for Rocket Lab, Rocket Lab to launch um, a really exciting mission. So um, as you might know, Rocket Lab is a relatively new launch provider, but they have successfully launched uh, many payloads to orbit at this point. Um, their Electron rocket has been, up to this point, an expendable rocket. They de deploy their new uh, payloads into orbit, and then the rocket kind of just, you know, it comes back down, um, gets partially destroyed through reentry, and, and lands in the ocean. Um, but today is different. Today is um, going to be their first ever uh, attempt to capture the rocket from the middle of the sky with a helicopter. Uh, so everybody is kind of freaking out about this event. It sounds like straight out of uh, science fiction. Um, it's going to be nuts. So uh, let's check in and see uh, how long we're looking until Rocket Lab starts their stream up. Uh, so we're currently waiting for Rocket Lab, which should indicate that they'll be starting their stream up relatively soon. Uh, but unt until then, let's, um, let's take a look uh, about what's happening with today's mission. So Rocket Lab published this awesome little pre press kit. So if you want to see this for yourself, just go to Rocket Lab's website. Uh, but of course, this was created by Rocket Lab. Uh, today's mission is called There and Back Again. Okay, again, this is the first time that they're going to try to bring that rocket back and catch it in midair with a helicopter. So <clears throat> this is going to be launching from their New, New Zealand launch facility. So as we see here in Google Maps, this is their launch complex. It uh, is situated right on, sorry, I'm just noticing my mic is peaking just a little bit. Um, it's situated right on the edge of uh, these cliffs here. Uh, if we scroll out a little bit, we get more context about where this is. It's on the tip of this uh, little section of New Zealand, um, which is actually, you know, northeast uh, side of that north island, uh, island in, in New Zealand. So uh, I was actually just looking at some of this information included in this pamphlet uh, and they actually they list a place where you can see the the rocket live so if you were to fly to New Zealand you could come out here to Blux Pit Road uh, near New Haka and actually watch this thing launch now <clears throat> that's 27 kilometers away and this is a relatively small launch vehicle so I'm not sure it's going to be the greatest launch viewing for like really getting to hear and feel uh, like a large rocket or anything like that but it should be uh, a really cool area to see, um, just like uh, an awesome landscape and, and, a, and, a, and a launch. I would love to go there. I think it would be really cool. Um, so yeah, let's uh, look a little bit through, while we're waiting for Rocket Lab to start up, we'll look through this a little bit. So this is the helicopter that's going to try to capture the rocket today. Um, I don't know the pronunciations of all this stuff, but it's a Sikorsky uh, S92. Uh, so uh, they include all this information about the helicopter here, uh, which is really cool. Uh, if you're into aviation or helicopters in general, uh, you'll definitely want to take a look um, at this document and, and get an idea about how this helicopter works and, you know, what it's used for. Um, this is the mission profile for today. Of course, the rocket will launch and uh, it'll come back down. It looks like it actually goes nearly horizontal for, for a moment there. I don't know if that's just the diagram, but um, then the rocket will come down, come under parachute, uh, and then the, the main chute will deploy, um, and the helicopter will pluck it out from the middle of the air with, you know, while it's under parachute. Hey, RMD, how's it going? Aha, nice, uh, nice emojis there, the rocket and helicopter. Yep, that's what we're hoping to see today. Um, so let's uh, check back in and just see Rocket Lab uh, has not started quite yet. Um, in the meantime, if anybody has any questions about today's launch or about space in general, rockets, anything at all, please feel free to drop those in the chat. But uh, we should be getting started pretty quickly here.
Uh, and they also provided a timeline of launch events here. So um, currently, T-0 is scheduled for 6.41 Eastern Time. Um, that's 5.41 Central. Um, so that is uh, just about 40 minutes or 30 minutes from now. So we're actually not far out from T-0 at all. Uh, so if this actually launches on time, um, we should be seeing this actual catch attempt in about 18 minutes after orbit, I mean, after launch. So yeah, like just a little over 45 minutes away from potentially seeing this rocket get captured by helicopter, which is really awesome. Of course, this is the electron launch vehicle up to this point. As I said, uh, this was a, uh, a not reusable, a non reusable uh, rocket. So it's really cool for them to have kind of gone back uh, to the drawing board and figured out how they could make this rocket reusable. Uh, so as we see oh, on the screen here, we have a, um, a section at the bottom that contains all the engines and the power pack for those engines. Then we got the kind of the main first stage, which will fuel, I mean, host, uh, hold the fuel and all the rocket propellant that they need. And of course, then the interstage, which connects the first stage up to that second stage, uh, which they call, um, actually, you know, what? I don't know if they have a specific name for the second stage on this. Um, but they got that second stage, um, but these actually have a kick stage as well. So um, after this, after the payload is actually payload is actually deployed into orbit, after it separates from the second stage, it does still have that kick stage uh, to get it to uh, its final intended destination orbit, which is cool. Um, we're really hoping to see uh, a live feed of this uh, recovery attempt today, but uh, Rocket Lab did state that. The area that the recovery is going to happen might not have, you know, the greatest uh, signal ability. So we'll have, we'll have to see what kind of videos come back live. But I'm sure they're taking videos, uh, and I'm sure they're writing those to, you know, drives. So if we don't see the actual video today, which we're hoping we do, but if we don't see that video of the catch attempt today, uh, you know they're going to have it, and hopefully they'll publish that for us to see. So that's cool. What else we got in this document here? Good looking, you know, cool looking helicopter. I wonder if that's the actual one or if this is kind of a stock photo. I would, now this definitely is the one. Um, this looks very likely to be the New Zealand uh, landscape here. And then you can see this rope hanging out from the bottom of the helicopter. Uh, I assume this was probably probably taken during some sort of capture test. Um, so, you know, they've they've kind of, I think what they've done is uh, attached um, a similar weighted load to the bottom of the helicopter on, the, on this rope, just to kind of do some testing to kind of understand how the helicopter will fly, um, if it was able to capture the, the rocket and train those pilots and everything. So I bet you this is a, a picture of the actual vehicle that should be capturing the rocket today. Um, but of course, Catching the rocket is kind of a secondary objective for today. The first and most important objective of this mission is for Rocket Lab to get their customers' payloads to orbit. So this is a huge, a huge launch for Rocket Lab, especially if they're able to do this recovery successfully. But the, the most important thing for Rocket Lab isn't that recovery. It's to make sure that they successfully and safely get their customers payloads to orbit. This isn't a test launch. This is an operational launch. And in the event that they, you know, if something went wrong here, they would be losing real customers payloads. Um, so we can see here that they have, um, I'm going to, you know, butcher some of these, um, actually Alba orbital, I guess. I don't know if I've actually heard of this company. Um, but there's four Pico satellites being launched for Al uh, Alba Orbital out of Scotland. Uh, Aurora Propulsion Technologies, uh, which has one payload on board today. Uh, and Asterix, uh, uh, Asterix Astronautics, um, which looks like it has one payload as well. Uh, but I think in total there's like 30 or something. Yeah, 34 satellites being launched today. So I think these are probably the, the, mo the most, um, you know, kind of high profile uh, satellites being launched today, but uh, there might be some other uh, customers on there as well. 
So let's check in. Rocket Lab has started their stream up. That is a good indication that they should be starting their coverage shortly here. So let's get this full screen for everyone. There we go. We have full screen. We're expecting their coverage to start pretty quickly here. Um, but in the meantime, thanks everybody for joining us so far. Um, happy to be back on streams. It's been a, f a few weeks of, of craziness getting everything ready for this move. Um, I'm definitely out of uh, out of practice with the streams, but um, I'm just gonna I'm just happy to be back and doing them. And uh, hopefully I'll be doing them regularly down here. And uh, I'm really excited to see you know what we can make out of the studio. So I appreciate everybody joining today. We got some audio coming in from Rocket Lab. It's just some background music so far. In the meantime, we'll check on their Twitter to make sure everything is still going according to schedule. There is the music. Bring that down a little bit. Okay, so we're looking at the Rocket Lab Twitter right now. Let's refresh to make sure we've got the most updated status here. Six minutes ago, Rocket Lab's post, we are live. Very good. Uh, 19 minutes ago, we will be broadcasting live. We also hope to share live views from the helicopter, but due to the remote ocean location where the catch attempt will take place, we do expect some video loss. So again, in the event that Rocket Lab is able to successfully launch their payloads to orbit today and bring that rocket back down to be caught by the helicopter. We hope to see some footage of that live, but we'll have to see. Um, about an hour ago, uh, the liquid oxygen fill started uh, at Launch Complex 1 for the there and back again mission. All right, we're getting started. Let's listen to the Rocket Lab intro here. You are looking at a live view of the rocket ready on the pad at Rocket Lab Launch Complex, Complex 1 on New Zealand's east coast, from where we will fly 34 spacecraft to space for a range of customers on board this rideshare mission. It is uh, the 3rd of May here in New Zealand, and we are about 20 minutes away from the opening of today's two-hour launch window with T0 set for 10.41 a.m. local time. My name's Muriel Baker and I'm here at Rocket Lab's Mission Control Centre in Auckland, New Zealand to take you through the launch and our incredibly exciting secondary mission to catch a returning rocket booster from space with a helicopter. Today's launch will be the first time we try to bring back Electron's booster underneath a helicopter. It's all part of our plan to make Electron the world's first reusable orbital class small rocket, and this mission is the most advanced milestone in the program yet. We have live footage coming into Mission Control from the helicopter for today's catch, which we will bring to you throughout this broadcast as we have it, and you can see it on your screen there. Keep in mind, though, that considering how far out to sea the helicopter will be, the video feed could be patchy and inconsistent, so bear with us, and we'll bring you what we can. From about T plus eight minutes into the mission, we'll cross to the view from the helicopter as they attempt the catch. And regardless of whether we get those live shots, we will bring you updates throughout this broadcast on those operations as soon as we have them. It goes without saying, though, that catching a rocket mid-air with a helicopter is unconventional and multiple factors need to align perfectly for today's first attempt. To they totally, totally screwed me up where they put the uh, T-minus clock, uh, clock in the bottom right. So right now we are T-minus 19 minutes and 3 seconds from launch, which is awesome. Everything is going according to plan. I'm just trying to figure out exactly how I should have my layout here. Uh, that way I'm not blocking anything that we want to see on their screen there. So bear with me while it's moving around, but it should only be for another minute. Every attempt, we will gather plenty of invaluable data to inform future attempts. 
We have recovered Electron's booster this way three times before on previous missions, where we used a parachute to slow Electron's first stage before landing it softly in the ocean to be retrieved by our recovery engineers from the vessel. All right, I think that will do for now. Okay, so what we're seeing right here is a live view of the rocket. As we can see, the weather is looking pretty good down there in New Zealand. And uh, wind, I would say, I'm you know not looking at any specific forecast, but just based on what we're seeing on the screen here, it doesn't look like there's much of a ground wind at all based on what we're seeing with, with that vapor coming off the, the rocket there. Um, not a ton of clouds, um, so I think um, the launch is looking pretty good for, uh, you know, weather's looking pretty good for launch. What you're seeing here is the uh, vapors coming off of, of the payload. Uh, that is that white smoke that you see around the rocket. And uh, that's they're currently filling that rocket with fuel. And that fuel is also burning off, uh, or boiling off rather. So they're constantly topping off those, um, those tanks and making sure this thing is ready to, uh, to launch when T minus zero comes around. Next will be the first of two stacks of Space Bees for Internet of Things Constellation Operator Swarm. Then we'll have the deployment of the Bro-6 satellite by Unseen Labs, a French company developing a constellation of satellites that detect radio frequency signals in marine mon monitoring. No fat vape clouds. I, I bet you when we get closer to T-0, those clouds will, uh, will, will get a bit thicker. It'll, uh, it'll look pretty cool also known as the Flying Object from Aurora Propulsion Technologies. This satellite will demonstrate space junk removal technologies for small satellites, including propulsion devices and plasma brakes that enable the sustainable use of space. Next will be the four PICO satellites from Alba Orbital. This cluster of tiny spacecraft includes Alba's Unicorn 2 Pocket Cube satellite, which carries an optical nighttime imaging payload designed to monitor light pollution across the globe. The other satellites are the TR... So the Rocket Lab team is currently kind of explaining what payloads are on, on board this rocket. Now, again, we're talking about 30-something satellites. All of those satellites are contained within the black nose cone of this rocket. So if you're looking from bottom to top on this rocket, you have kind of a, a silver area, a white area, a red area, a black area, a white area, and finally at the top, there's that cone, a black cone all of the customer payloads are in that black cone, all 34 satellites. So even though this is a relatively small rocket, you can get a lot of payloads up to orbit. And they are relatively small payloads, of course. But nowadays, you don't need a huge car-sized satellite to do important things in orbit, which is really cool. Um, so you can get these Pico satellites and these Nano satellites. Um, you know, we're talking uh, anything from the size of a credit card up to a shoebox or... Um, you know, uh, some luggage. Um, so you can really get some amazing science and technology um, and infrastructure uh, in, in these small satellites. So pretty impressive. What we're seeing here is a, is a video of them uh, doing some sort of testing um, for trying to catch one of these rockets. So we see the helicopter there, we see a rocket falling. Now, of course, this wasn't a rocket that went to space. Lou says rocket launch. Yeah, Lou, let's go. We got T minus in 14 minutes. Before it attempts the catch. To do this, the S92 is equipped with a long line this with a capture hook that will be used to snag in Electron's parachute cable as it slowly descends over the ocean. To practice our rocket catching skills, we've carried out many mid air capture tests prior to this mission. These were conducted by dropping an Electron first stage test article from a second helicopter, deploying the stage's parachute, and then using the S92 to catch the stage as it descends. And I'm going to take you through a quick rundown also through the recovery process once today's mission leaves the pad. Oh, still At about two and a half minutes after liftoff, Electron's first and second stages will separate like normal. Electron's second stage will continue on to orbit for payload deployment, while Electron's first stage will reorient itself and begin its descent back to Earth. It does this with tiny thrusters on the main body to tilt the first stage on the correct angle to slice through the atmosphere on the way back down. 
after deploying the <laughs> to practice our rocket catching skills. Isn't that a crazy thing to ever say? Imagine putting that on your resume. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's just insane that we've got to this point of space travel where we're actually reusing these rockets and landing them on drone ships and trying to catch them with with helicopters. And I think ULA's next rocket, the uh, Vulcan, uh, I think the engine section is supposed to come off and just the engine s section is going to come down and be caught by helicopters. So crazy stuff, crazy stuff. Approach the T minus 12 minute mark in this count to our launch. Our operators on console will be run through the go no go pole by this mission's launch director, Joseph Carpico. This is the final assessment on whether all of Electron systems are go for launch, and our operators are happy to proceed. Let's they got a sleek looking uh, mission control there. I like kind of the just the really dark um, consoles and you know matching monitors. Everybody seems to be wearing black. Uh, it's cool. I like it. We're at T minus 12 minutes and 33 seconds. Sounds like we're getting live audio coming through from Mission Control as well. Um, we don't have any, you know, there's no clean feed to hear what, you know, comms are saying yet. Uh, it just sounds kind of like general ambiance. Um, definitely can't make anything out, but it sounds like we're getting audio. Right, LD, LD, sup. Sounds like we're holding. Copy that. Is Neb co-hosting? Let's listen in. I think we'll get some more comms from Mission Control here in a second, but yeah, Neb is not co-hosting. He's in the other room, but um, yeah, so I just set the room up today. Um, a lot more work Stand to be by done. For an here shortly. But I just got a couple of my pieces of art behind me for now. So it sounds like we've got a hold in that go no go poll from our launch director. So we're going to stand by, listen in for more information from Mission Control, and wait for an update. Oh, Lou, I think my, my room looks cool. I agree. They have a really cool Mission Control Center. So. What we did just hear is that the teams are currently um, holding at T minus 12 minutes. So what that means is that, um, so at different parts of the launch countdown, there are steps that teams are looking at data that's coming off the rocket to make sure things look like there's, you know, that are in bounds of what they're expecting. I'm talking about temperatures, pressures, all, all sorts of stuff. All on mission. Uh, please continue to monitor your critical systems and be prepared for a go, no go on restarting of the count. So they were likely seeing something in that data set that looked out of bounds. Um, so in that event, they they pause the they pause the T minus zero countdown and uh, try to figure out what's happening, and then they decide if it's still safe uh, to go forward for launch. So as you just heard there, um, it sounded like probably launch director uh, was instructing uh, mission control, everybody in mission control, um, to kind of stand by, listen in on all the comms. And then very, sh very shortly, we should hear them um, go back through and check with everybody if the issue is a bigger problem or if they'll be able to continue with the team minus countdown. So we'll stand by and listen to uh, listen in for that. Your room uh, does look cool, too. Thanks. 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 I'll get it. Um, I'll def I think I'm going to get like a big bookshelf down back here. And that way I'll have like a bunch of cool space stuff behind me. Um, but. We'll see, still working it out. Those of you just joining us, uh, a quick note to let you know that we are in a hold at T minus 12 minutes to launch. We're standing by for an update from Mission Control, and as soon as we have that, we'll share that with you here. We're still in that hold, as you just heard. Um, one thing I'm not positive on is what the launch window looks like for today. I don't know how long they can remain in this hold. 
Um, let's actually take a quick look at the document that uh, Rocket Lab provided to see if we can get any indication of how long this launch window lasts and how long they can be working on an issue like this. So let's go to browser and there and back again. Daily launch opportunity target launch time. Okay, so let's look at uh, Eastern time because I am mostly familiar with that for now. Uh, 6.35 was the start of the window and it goes until 8.40. Uh, so it is currently 6.33 Eastern time. So they have, yeah, they have just over two hours left of the window. Or sorry, an hour left of the window. Hour and a half, what? Oh, it's 8.40? Yeah. So we got two hours left of the window. My math is all confused because I just moved time zones and now I'm all I'm all over over the place. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what time it is. I don't know what time zone zone I'm in. It's hilarious. What's up, Andrew? How's it going, Titan? How are you? We are just waiting to hear more from Rocket Lab about the cause of their holds. We're holding at T-minus 12 minutes. In the meantime, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to let me know and I'll do my best to answer those for you. Checking in on the Rocket Lab Twitter. Let's check in together. everyone just an update for those of you who have joined us again uh, that we are in a hold at t minus 12 minutes while we wait for an update from our launch director on whether we'll proceed through to t0 but on your screen you've got those live views coming in from the recovery helicopter out over the pacific ocean nice. our hold should not have an effect on these recovery procedures so uh, don't no worries there but we'll come back to you with an update as soon as we hear more from our launch director sounds like they have planned this helicopter to be able to lock, to kind of last the duration of the launch window, um, at least based on, on what she just said there. Um, I'm wondering how that works with, with their fuel. I wonder if they have enough fuel capacity to fly around for two hours and then still have enough fuel that they can get back to where they need to bring the rocket after they catch it. Um, so we'll, hopefully we'll learn more about that as these, uh, you know, in this stream or in future Rocket Lab streams. Um, I'm sure we'll learn a lot more about these operations for recovering these rockets via helicopter. Um, but right now we're getting a side-by-side -side view. On the left, this is the view, obviously looking down from the helicopter that will hopefully catch the rocket on the right after that rocket delivers payloads to orbit. Weather is looking good. Um, so again, some things that could um, cause a hold in the countdown. Um, there could be I don't think this is what happened because it would be too early in the countdown, I think, for a hold here. But there could be something in the, oh. the LD on mission. I've resumed the count. So we are now at 13 minutes, 26 seconds and counting. The new T0 time is a 224952 UTC or 104952 New Zealand Standard Time. We'll talk more about the reasons for hold uh, next, next time we see a hold. But right now we are counting down to liftoff. We are T minus 13 minutes and 8 seconds. So whatever the Rocket Lab teams did see to cause that hold, um, apparently those issues are no longer relevant or they've worked through those issues and resolved them um, or just figured that those are still safe So there we go. That was proceed. good news from our launch director. The count has resumed towards our launch today from LC1 of there and back again. We have a new T0 time. It's 10.49 a.m. I can confirm I am uh, actively monitoring mission cord, LV cord, range cord, and safety net. Just to uh, finish up there, I just want to confirm All that we have a new... Please be prepared for a go, no, go poll at T minus 12 minutes. 
Okay, so we have a new T0 time at 10.49 a.m. New Zealand local time, or 22.49 UTC. And as you heard from our launch director there, we are about 18 seconds away from the go, no-go poll for this mission. So we'll wait here with mission control comms and listen in to what our operators have to confirm. So the new, we're just 12 minutes away from launch here. If the go, no-go poll at T minus 12 minutes uh, is good. And that should happen literally right This is the LD on mission with a uh, go, no-go sequence poll stage. Stages go. Avionics. Avionics is go. GNC. GNC is go. Vcon. Vcon is go. T1. T1 is go. GC. GC is go. PLS. PLS is go. RSO. RSO is go. Met. Met is go. MM. MM is go. LD sub. LD sub go. All operators, this is the LD on mission. Uh, go no go sequence is complete. We are T minus 11 minutes, that's 24 seconds and counting. We are go for terminal count at T minus 10 minutes. From this time, the three word hold procedure is in effect. Okay, so what we just heard there is great news. The teams are confident that they are safe right now to continue to go for launch. Um, and I would like to take a second to answer Lou's question. Lou, you definitely get the gold star of the day. This is probably the most important question that could have been asked. Um, what happens if they don't catch it? So um, earlier in the stream, I did state that the catching of the rocket is kind of a secondary, just making sure nothing important is being said. Nope. Um, so the most important part of the mission is to deploy the customer's payloads into orbit. So first and foremost, this rocket has to go up to, to, to orbit and deploy those satellites into space. Catching the rocket and being able to use it on a future mission is a secondary mission. And this is the first time they're actually trying this for real. So I think Rocket Lab has kind of communicated openly that, you know, they basically don't put your money on, on this launch succeeding the first time. It, you know, they put all the hours into the engineering and all the testing to make sure this does work first time. But there's always unforeseen, um, unforeseen things that happen um, that you can't really account for that will happen when you do it for the first time. So there's always a chance that they don't successfully catch this rocket. And if they don't, that's okay. Um, I, I, I highly doubt Rocket Lab is planning on, or like literally in in their business plans, planning on reusing this specific rocket. Now, if, if they are able to catch it and it's, it's uh, in good shape and it looks good, they very well will probably reuse this for a future mission. But I think if this rocket is lost, I think it's okay. All of the other electrons before this moment um, were only used once and then they were you know, disposed of after launch. Um, and this rocket was never intended to be uh, reusable from the get-go. Um, so uh, Rocket Lab will be fine if this rocket isn't caught, um, but it'll be better if it is caught. So uh, we'll see there, we'll see. If you, uh, if you caught some of the glimpses on, on screen there a moment ago, they showed uh, a different rocket and that is the Neutron rocket that Rocket Lab is developing right now that, that will eventually launch out of Wallops Island, Virginia. Super cool rocket, definitely check it out. Um, I'll, I'll talk to, you know, I'll talk to you about it in future Rocket Lab streams, but it's such an exciting rocket that's coming up. But uh, let's uh, listen in and see if there's any updates. Right next door is Pad B, where we will be hosting a very exciting mission next month. Flying in May from Launch Complex 1, we are taking the step before the leap with the launch of the capstone mission to the moon to support NASA's intent to return humans to the lunar surface. With our Electron rocket and our Photon spacecraft, our role is to deliver the capstone small satellite owned and operated by Advanced Space to a particular orbit of the moon where NASA is planning for Gateway, a future small space station to provide astronauts with access to the moon. Their capstone will test and verify the orbital stability of that location, as well as test whether communication with NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter can gauge positioning, potentially allowing future spacecraft to determine their location. So that's really cool. So uh, as you heard there, Rocket Lab is going to be deploying a payload to the moon uh, sometime this upcoming month or next month. So that's in preparation for the moon missions that are coming up with NASA. Uh, so it's really cool to see Rocket Lab uh, able to kind of step up and, and assist with this big, you know, push to get back to the moon. Uh, so that's really cool. 
Uh, Brandon asks, how do they catch it without hitting the helicopter? So that's a really great question, and I'm sure I'm sure a lot of time and energy and math and simulations went into this. Um, I don't know the best way to answer this question, but I would assume it. The answer is just hours and hours of grinding in in a simulator to make sure that the pilots are confident that they understand what's happening with the rocket. Um, and I'm and I think there's. I think it's safer than it sounds. You know, catching a rocket out of midair with a helicopter sounds pretty dangerous, but I think it's probably a little bit safer than it actually does sound. I'm sure there are um, important keystones or milestones that happen while that rocket is coming back down from space um, that will kind of inform the pilots of um, if they should continue forward and try to plan to catch it or not. One of those big ones, obviously, would be drone, or sorry, uh, shoot deployment. So obviously if those parachutes don't deploy, I think the pilots will obviously get that indication and that notification. And at that point, obviously the you know pilots won't go try to catch it. Um, but obviously there's risk involved. You know, there has to be risk involved. It's, it's human, um, it's a human operation. There's humans on board, human in the loop. So um, there's always, there's always um, some risk there. And once they catch it, Obviously, that changes the whole way that the, the helicopter flies. And, uh, yeah, basically, I'm just hoping that the, uh, the pilots have, have done a lot of training and understand uh, what, they're, what they're about to do. And it's really cool. Um, they, must, uh, they must be thrilled right now to be flying around and, you know, wondering whether or not they're going to be catching a rocket in the next 10, 15 minutes. So, really cool. Thanks for the question. That was a great question, too. Head ...and spacecraft integration facilities and preparing systems for the mission. We're proud to be working alongside NASA, Advanced Space, and Terran Orbital to deliver this historic mission and play our part in humanity's return to the moon. But turning our attention back to the pad at LC-1 now, and we can see that Electron's top clamp has opened and the strong back has moved away from the launch vehicle. So that... Um that device you see on the left hand side of the rocket is the strongback and you see a big kind of what looks like a big rope kind of going from that strongback to the rocket um, inside the rope is everything the rocket needs for the countdown so we're talking power fuel uh, air probably oxygen uh, you know liquid oxygen as as rocket uh, fuel um, so uh, basically that keeps the rocket upright that's what they use to deliver the rocket out to the pad that's what they use to get all of all of the you know electricity and gases and everything that the rocket needs, and then right before launch, that you know a few minutes before launch, that slowly uh, pulls back, and uh, most of the time you'll see uh, rock, you know launch providers they'll see that strong back drop even further away right before launch. So we'll see uh, we'll see what Rocket Lab does here shortly. Fully fueled for launch. At T minus one minutes, the call will come from Mission Control that Electron's first and second stages are pressurized for launch and the vehicle is ready. Then we'll move to the final countdown to liftoff at T minus 10 seconds and engine ignition shortly before liftoff at T zero. Let's go to Mission Control comms now and listen into our launch director take us through the final count. All right, this is the exciting moment here, guys. All right, three minutes and 40 seconds. Uh, go GC. ECS disabled, pad auto sequence is armed, pad is ready for launch. Copy. Getting excited. We might get to see a rocket get caught by a helicopter here in the next few minutes. LDA avionics mission. I'll go ahead, avionics. Every system is on incident power and enable for flight. Roger, thank you, sir. GNC, LD on mission. LD, GNC. Uh, yes, sir. Confirm all expected recovery as goes. Our green and being monitored. Confirmed. All operators, this is the LD on mission with the LD go for launch. From now on, there should be no red flags on your critical LCCs. Econ, LD on mission. LD, Econ. Confirm all expected flight computer as goes. Our green. Confirmed, green. Econ, lock auto sequence and confirm. Confirmed, locked. All operators, we are go for auto sequence start at T minus two minutes. LT is go for launch. T minus two minutes, 30 seconds. Here we go. 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 Here
everything is go for launch. We should see this thing take off the pad in the next two minutes, 20 seconds. It'll take about 10 minutes for this rocket to get up to orbit and for its payloads to be deployed. Um, actually, it's gonna take a lot longer for those payloads to be deployed, but it'll get up into orbit within the first 10 minutes. And uh, about eight minutes after that, we'll see the stage one uh, hopefully get captured by that helicopter. So once that clock hits T minus zero and this thing takes off, it'll take about 18 minutes for the rocket to come back down. Um, and that's when we should see some of that Maybe helicopter action. Switch to internal power. Vehicle, Vehicle is, fully is now internal power. Vehicle's now using the batteries on board HG for power rather than enabled for flight. rather than the uh, umbilicals that we talked about a few minutes ago. Locks load complete, lock system in recirculation. That red band in the middle of the rocket indicates that this is a reusable version of Electron. They use a different color for when they are planning to expend the rocket. Beautiful weather there in New Zealand. Looks nice and clear for launch. Gorgeous. All IT guys drink disabled. Stage one and stage two are pressed for flight. Forty-five seconds. Flight engine purge is enabled. Deluge is activated. T minus twenty seconds and counting. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and we have lift off. All right, rocket is in the air. We're eighteen minutes away from seeing the first ever Rocket Lab rocket being caught by a helicopter. Stage one propulsion is nominal. T plus 31 seconds into the mission and Electron is airborne after our 26th launch from LC1. We have a great view of that Electron leaving the pad as Electron powers its way to space. We are now at three or four kilometers in altitude and very soon Electron will... It looks like the teams are having a little bit of a hard time tracking that rocket with the cameras, but hopefully we'll get onboard cameras as we see right here. Look at, that looks fake. It looks so beautiful. That's incredible. Ben says he always hates how long it takes to take off. Yeah, it really is a long, um, the, you know, they start those, that water, the sound suppression pretty early and then it takes a while to take off on the pad here. So the rocket is going through max Q or the uh, time uh, during launch when the vehicle experiences the most pressure. This is when the rocket's nine. This is when the rocket's nine Rutherford engines on its first stage power down, and then the rocket will drift for just a moment before the first and second stage separate. Main engine cutoff, which you just heard about, is going to happen at T plus two minutes and twenty nine seconds, uh, so just under one minute from now, or really twenty seconds. Of those first three events. And then just a couple seconds, seconds to Miko. Just a couple seconds after main engine cutoff, we'll see the separation and the second stage ignition. Coming up here in 10 seconds. Miko confirmed. 
Stage stage one. Separation successful. Looks good. Second stage, stage ignition. ignition All right. So that piece that's falling away right now is the first stage that's coming going to come back down, and they're going to try to catch that thing with the helicopter. Stage engine start. Our electron recovery attempt is now officially in motion, and we are off to a fantastic start with this mission. As the mission continues for our customers, the fairing protecting their satellites will soon separate and fall away. In preparation, those helicopter pilots' hearts right now must be beaten. Those we had that visual and audio confirmation we were after of the fairing successfully deploying. A I check of stage video. two speed and altitude tells us the mission is continuing nominally, currently at more than 125 kilometers above Earth and reaching speeds of more than 8,000 kilometers per hour. Onward to orbit. Stage two propulsion is nominal. Guidance is nominal. So even though stage one did separate quite a while ago from stage two, it is actually still ascending through the atmosphere. Um, that stage one will not hit its peak altitude until T plus four minutes in 36 seconds. Uh, so that's about 30, 30 seconds from now. So that stage is still ascending up through the atmosphere in an arc. Uh, it'll hit that peak and then it'll slowly start to come back down. And then we should see the chutes deploy at 7.29, T plus 7 minutes and 29 seconds. So just three minutes from now. No additional Electron video. Second holding nominal. Electron no. second stage engine, as you heard there, is continuing nominally and firing hot as the mission continues to orbit. Very good. No additional video from stage one yet, but fingers are crossed. I'm hoping we get some video. Next milestones to watch out for will be the deployment of the first shoot on the Electron booster and the swap of... There's stage one right there on the left-hand side. It's still, still in good shape there, coming back down. Be confirmed across mission control comms, so we'll make sure to listen out for those. Meanwhile, our recovery helicopter is ready and waiting out over the Pacific Ocean for that drogue chute on the stage one to deploy, knowing that will indicate the main chute deployment and helicopter catch attempt will be only minutes away. Every, from my eyes, everything's looking good with that first stage coming back nice and slowly. Not actually slowly, Taking a but look it looks at pretty the telemetry, to me. Electron second stage continues on its journey to orbit at a speed of over 11,000 kilometers an hour and an altitude of more than 220 kilometers. Meanwhile, Electron's first stage is on the correct angle of attack to make its way through the wall, as you can see on your left there. Now, that wall is the roughest part of the atmosphere, but thanks to the RCS uh, thrusters we mentioned earlier, the stage one booster is on a very smooth descent. We are coming up to the next gate, though, for Electron second stage to clear. So stage two is still going up into space. It is going to continue uh, into its uh, its proper orbit. And it's going to deploy payloads. The first stage, we are less than one minute away from parachute deployment on that first stage. So let's see if we still get video for that. So keep your eyes on your screen for that and your ears open for Go the call nominal. from Mission Control to confirm. Guidance is nominal. Come on, video. I want some video. But like I said, if we don't see it live, I do anticipate that Rocket Lab will release the recorded footage of the uh, the attempt. 
I'll swap to successful. Battery mm -hmm. does, and confirm. We have some clapping. We should have... Stage 2 propulsion holding nominal. Stage 1 parachute deployment should have just happened, which is hopefully what that clapping was. Shoots deployed. Shoots deployed. Battery hot swap is confirmed, and so too, you heard it there, the deployment of the drogue chute on nice. Electron's first stage. The second stage is continuing nominally on its mission for our customers. You can see... It'll take like another 10 seconds for the full shoots to unfurl. And I assume we will hear a call out for when those main shoots have fully de been deployed as well. Slow down the boosters travel to a slow enough speed for our recovery helicopter to safely move in and attempt to capture it. All right, we should be hearing about the main parachutes getting fully deployed on stage one. Which of course is a pre resicate pre to uh, good shoot. Good shoot. We're good. Okay, we should Fantastic be less than news 10 there from Mission away. Control. We have just had confirmation that the main parachute on stage one was successfully deployed and the S 92 helicopter can prepare to capture Electron. We'll be bringing you updates as soon as we have them, but very soon we are also expecting Seco. That is live footage of the helicopter waiting to catch the rocket. We're under 10 minutes away from seeing that happen, hopefully live. Second stage is still looking good. Got some more video from the helicopter. Entered burnout detected. Guidance is impermanent, 27 seconds remaining. It's a bit longer of a second stage burn than normal to get us to our 520 kilometer SSO orbit. Uh, on the left, you can see the helicopter moving into position. And on the right, we have Electron's second stage traveling onto orbit. Seco. Second stage is looking good. Stage three separation confirmed. Normal transfer orbit achieved. Stage three, I guess. You see on the screen there, the Rutherford engine on Electron stage two has successfully shut down, and stage two and the kick stage will have cleanly separated. The kick stage will now enter what we call a coasting phase while it's in an elliptical orbit before its Curie engine ignites and propels it into its sun synchronous orbit, where we will deploy the satellites. Now, on the left of your screen, you can see the views from that recovery helicopter. We have only a few minutes left in the capture window where that helicopter can safely recover Electron. Remember, catching a returning rocket stage mid-air is as, as it returns from space, is as highly complex as it sounds, and it demands extreme precision. So several critical milestones must align perfectly to ensure a successful capture. We are on track to do that, but we are prepared with an ocean vessel nearby. And we've just had confirmation as well that the parachute is inside of the pilot on that chopper. Exciting stuff. Hopefully we'll see All it right. on our screens there soon too. Helicopter pilot has the rocket in sight. So I think this is where the pilots use their expertise to decide kind of what their status is right now, if everything is looking good, if they feel confident about going to snatch this rocket out we of the We are all out, waiting out on the edge of our seats here at our facilities. If this catch is a success, it marks an enormous milestone in our recovery program. Let's hope we can see that parachute in the frame of the camera soon. Keeping a close eye on that left screen. Right now we just see the tops of that cloud layer, but we're hoping to see that parachute come into view We've here. We've got various members of our uh, recovery team stationed at the drop zone back on land, out on the recovery vessel for support. 
here in MCC. They're in that crowd, as you've seen in some of our shots. And of course, we have our pilot in the powerful Sikorsky S-92 helicopter. In that's just the recovery rope that we see there. That's not the rocket. Now you can see some of our recovery team members there. Uh, I don't think they could get any closer to that screen if they could. They are no doubt very anxious and waiting like we all are for this capture attempt to go ahead. Literally, like I, I'm like right up against my screen here trying to see if I can see that parachute come into view. We still could be up to five minutes out, but I think that's kind of a maximum, a maximum uh, time frame. So it could be anywhere between now and five minutes from now, I think. Okay. It was only three years ago, can you believe it, that we announced the Recovery and Reusability Program. And here we are today after five successful previous re-entries bringing us to this moment. What you can see on your screen is the line from the helicopter with the capture hook at the end of it. Uh, that pilot is moving into position to attempt that catch with the electron booster underneath the parachute. Hopefully we'll see that on our screen soon. Uh, but keep your fingers crossed for this attempt. Fingers are definitely crossed. Just very quickly while I can, I want to point you to the right side of the screen that shows that the kick stage is on its elliptical pass above the world and onward to orbit for our customers. And then of course, again, we're all keeping our eyes on the left that you can see the recovery helicopter in that zone uh, moving in for the catch attempt. Hopefully again, that we see that soon. In the meantime, while we're waiting to see that happen on the left-hand side of the screen here, I do just wanna say thank you everybody that has joined us here so far today. This is an exciting one for sure. Um, so we're hoping to see this rocket get caught out of midair by a helicopter. Um, all of the questions today so far have been really great. I really appreciate that. So thanks for sticking around and uh, we should see some excitement here in the next couple minutes, four minutes or less. I'm not seeing anything quite yet, but it's still early. I'm feeling pretty I don't confident. I about all of you viewing, but the longer I watch this line waiting for that hello, the uh, parachute to come in. Oh. Oh. Oh, there we go. We've got our first glimpse of it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Did it get it? Did you guys see that? I think it has it. No way. That was way closer than I thought it was going to be. Wow. They did it. Absolutely incredible stuff there. We have successfully caught that electron booster underneath the parachute. So that helicopter confirming again has hooked onto the drogue line and has captured electron. Just incredible. So now the helicopter will bring the stage to land where our engineers will analyze and determine if electron is suitable for reflight. I just heard some uh, interesting sighs from it sounded like size from the uh, mission control there. So um, I'm st as far as I know, I think they, they still caught that rocket. But, um, you know, there's always a chance that maybe they caught it and then something looked wrong. So they could have, dro you know, dropped it on purpose. Um, but, you know, as I said, as far as I know right now, I think they caught that. That was actually incredible footage. I did not expect it now to be Now we're going to take a bit of a break on the webcast, but we will be back with you closer to payload deployment for the primary mission to listen into those final moments from Mission Control. I'll see you back here soon. Okay, let's debrief. So we're not going to stay on through uh, the duration here until the second uh, payloads, you know, the payloads get deployed into orbit. There's still a little bit out uh, of time out for that. Um, but what we just saw there was Rocket Lab uh, launching and successfully deploying their second, third stage, their kick stage, up into orbit 
Um, hopefully we'll see those payloads successfully get deployed over the next, you know, 20, 30, 40 minutes. And then that first stage did come back down under parachute and get caught by the helicopter. Um, everything that we hear so far is that it, the, the catch was successful. It sure looked successful from the video. So we're going to look for any updates from Rocket Lab about how everything went. But that looked really cool. Um, one thing I did want to point out, just because I, I, I also find finances in, in the market and stuff really interesting, um, is, oops, wrong screen, um, is that, you know, the market did seem to uh, respond uh, respond to Rocket Lab catching catching this rocket. So, um, you know, Rocket Lab is a public, publicly traded company. Um, so just, just a piece of news to kind of point out there um, based on what we saw on the stream here. So... Yeah, I think that's where I'm going to leave y'all. Uh, so if you have any questions before I go, please put those in the chat now and I will stay here for a couple minutes and answer those. Um, but in the meantime, I'll do my kind of final final spiel here. Um, I'm so happy that we did the stream here today. I just threw everything together this morning uh, to get the studio into ship shape. Um, not even just barely good enough to get the stream done today. Um, I just moved down here to Starbase. Um, if you're excited to see what's happening with, with Starship and everything, please follow along. Um, so we, we got to see Rocket Lab's first recovery here. Hopefully we'll do live streams in person from, you know, any launches that happen down here. If, if the FAA can, uh, can, uh, give some approvals, we will, we will see how that holds, holds down. But I'll be on Twitter all the time, posting updates from Starbase and, um, I'll be, uh, I'll be making more films and everything as well. If you want to see the YouTube or anything, just go to, obviously this is YouTube, but if you want to see some of my older videos, go to rocketfuture.org uh, and you'll see the links there and everything. Um, you'll see my socials there as well, uh, srocketfuture on Twitch or Twitter, um, but I am on Twitch as well. Uh, we just have some more casual streams there. We watch, we sometimes just hang out, watch Starlink streams and stuff here, but you're at the right place for any big streams, Rocket Lab, Astra, new launch vehicles, SLS, uh, crude launch vehicles, all that is here on the YouTube. You found the spot. Uh, so I think that's all I got right now. Um, I really appreciate everybody sticking around. And I am checking for any final questions. Uh, ben also thought that was a lot closer than he expected, and I agree. That was insane. Uh, Andrew Paris, a.k.a. Titan, says, outstanding. I couldn't agree more. That looked fantastic. Um, and I think no matter what we, we, we end up hearing, um, I think that was a tremendous success. Um, and Rocket Lab, I think, just secured, you know, who knows. But I, I feel like they just kind of secured their, their space here in the industry. So very cool. Very cool to see. So uh, first stream back in, in a few weeks, a little rusty, but I, uh, I think I worked some of the kinks out by the end, end of the stream here, feel, feeling a little bit more comfortable um so thanks for everybody uh for everybody that joined and asked question or commented and hanging out again my name is andrew this is solid rocket future covering the most exciting parts of human spaceflight and rocketry if you want to catch the rest of the uh the rocket lab footage definitely check out their youtube and everything but thank you so much and we'll talk to you next time see ya